I'm what you call a nerd. A redstone nerd. And I'm going to be taking you on a deep dive into the fascinating world of PNC ticks. So not only will you be able to do things like this, but you'll also have a deep enough understanding of this concept to be able to implement PNC ticks to improve your own redstone builds. Best part is, PNC ticks are in the vanilla game, so that means you won't need any add-ons or cheats to be able to utilize them. First things first, let's talk about redstone ticks. Not to be confused with random tick rate, which is an option in the world menu. If you don't already know what it is, a redstone tick is the measurement of delay in a redstone circuit. Also, all redstone items work on a redstone tick basis. As you can see, when I flick this lever, the light turns on instantly. But when I add a repeater with a one redstone tick delay, it powers the light slightly later. And if I put the repeater to four redstone ticks delay, you can see that it's even more delayed than the other repeater. Since redstone components also operate on a redstone tick basis, this piston on the left is at a zero redstone tick delay, while the piston on the right is after a repeater with a one redstone tick delay. So the piston on the left is going to extend first. Now the way a redstone tick works is there are 10 redstone ticks every second, meaning each redstone tick is one tenth of a second long. So if I put a 10 redstone tick delay in a circuit, for example if I had two repeaters set to four ticks and one set to two, the total delay becomes 10 redstone ticks because 4 plus 4 plus 2 equals 10. So when I flick this lever exactly one second later the lamp is going to turn on. And that's because this first repeater set to 4, then 4, and then this one's 2, which would be 10 redstone ticks, which is 1 second. Now let's move on to game ticks. While there are 10 redstone ticks in a second, there are actually 20 game ticks every second, with each game tick lasting 1 20th of a second. An example of something that would operate on a game tick basis would be command blocks. Interestingly, redstone dust doesn't function on a redstone tick basis like other redstone components. It actually operates on a game tick basis instead. This seemingly insignificant fact actually is the entire reason Minecraft Bedrock has zero ticks. Because for some reason, even though redstone dust updates every game tick, it visually updates only on odd game ticks. Leading to this effect where you can power certain redstone components while the redstone dust appears to be off. Now redstone wise, there are two types of game ticks. The first one being P ticks, which is short for producer ticks. P ticks only occur on odd game ticks. During a P tick, all producer redstone components that have power will activate. Some examples of producer redstone components include repeaters, comparators, redstone torches, and observers. So if I send a redstone pulse on a P tick, you'll notice only those items I've listed will power when I flick the lever. This happens because the pulse was sent only on a P tick, so anything that operates on a C tick won't be powered. Speaking of C tick, Ticks, C ticks are short for consumer ticks, which are the game ticks when the redstone components that consume redstone signals can activate. Some consumer redstone components include pistons, redstone lamps, TNT, dispensers, droppers, as well as powered and activator rails. Consumer ticks also only occur on even game ticks, making this pattern where it's going to be a P tick, then it's going to be a C tick, then it's going to repeat and be a P tick again in the next redstone tick. Now if I send a redstone signal to the same components as I did earlier, only this time I send the redstone pulse on a C tick, you'll notice only the consumer redstone components will activate while the producer ones won't activate. You might have also noticed that it didn't even look like the redstone line turned on either which just shows that the signal was only sent on a C tick. Because as I mentioned earlier, redstone dust only visually turns on on P ticks for some reason. That's why C ticks are often referred to as zero tick. Which I want to get out of the way and say zero ticks don't actually exist in Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Because for something to be a zero tick it would have to be instant but it's actually a C tick which is 1 20th of a second so it's not actually instant. Zero ticks do exist however on Java Edition. Another thing that only exists on Java edition is bud power. Like bud powering, PNC ticks can be confusing at first, but once mastered, they can offer immense benefit. To help with getting started, I've designed this little cheat sheet that has most of the redstone components sorted by if they are a P or a C tick item. Don't worry about memorizing this, I'll provide a download link to this image in the description. You see, when I flick this lever, you'll notice both pistons will fire at the same time, which might lead you to be scratching your head at first, and maybe even saying this is bug rock. But taking a closer look and examining it, this can actually be logically explained. You see, when you flick the lever, it only activates on a C tick, so the pistons extend at the same time because since the lever activates on a C tick, the redstone is powered, but then a P tick occurs next, which then powers the repeater, then on the next C tick after both pistons will fire. Same process occurs when I deactivate the levers also. However, when I power the lever that runs into a repeater, you'll notice that the piston on the left will fire first. This is because even though the lever powers on a C tick, the repeater now makes the signal on a P tick. So when the signal now goes into the circuit, the next thing is a C tick instead of how last time it was a P tick. Meaning that this time the piston on the left will fire on the following C tick, and then the repeater will then go off on the P tick that follows after. And then finally, after that P tick, a C tick will occur powering the other piston. And again, the same process will occur when I deactivate the lever also. Now, before I get into some cool uses,
Joseph for PNC Tech. I wanted to take a moment to ask for your support. If you've enjoyed this video so far and found it informative, entertaining, or simply mind-blowing, then maybe consider subscribing to the channel. By subscribing, it shows me that you actually care about my videos and encourages me to actually keep making more content like this. So if you feel like showing your support, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Joining my community of awesome people interested in pushing the limits of redstone and Minecraft bedrock. Sorry about that, let's get right back into the video. Now you might be wondering, what can you do with this knowledge? Well, let me share some exciting possibilities with PNC Tick. For instance, if you want to scare your friends, you can create a contraption that sends a pulse on a P tick, ensuring that the TNT won't get powered, but then the repeater at the end will. This is because TNT is a consumer redstone component, so it will only update if it's a redstone signal on a C tick. But since the signal is only on a P tick, the TNT never gets powered at all. The repeater is powered, however, because it only activates on a P tick, which is the same pulse as the one that we sent. Another use for PNC ticks is you could potentially use them in compacting your redstone build. See, since these pistons are sharing the same input wire, but this one has a repeater running into it, you can effectively choose which one of these pistons will fire based on the type of tick you send into the system. Since pistons extend only on C ticks and repeaters only extend on P ticks, if you send the signal only on a C tick, then the piston without the repeater will fire. But if the redstone signal is only sent on a P tick, then the repeater will fire, powering the piston, while the other piston won't fire because it only would power on a C tick. One more example of use that is personally my favorite is using P and C ticks so that you can make half tick repeaters. Now what do I mean by that? Since normal repeaters have one redstone tick of delay, what I mean by half tick is the repeater configuration I designed has half of a redstone tick of delay. Because instead of utilizing redstone ticks, it's utilizing game ticks. Which as I went over earlier, there are two game ticks in each redstone tick. So if I put two lines next to each other, one using repeaters and the other using half tick repeaters, you'll notice that half tick repeaters will have half the time to send a signal over long distances over normal repeaters. Which could be useful with bigger redstone builds to cut down on how long it takes to send redstone signals. Sadly though, when it is turning off, it takes the exact same amount of time as repeaters. Now the way this works is let's say we extend the redstone signal 10 times over a long distance. With just repeaters, that would obviously just be 10 repeaters. And each repeater would only power on a P tick because repeaters, again, only power on P tick. This simple half tick repeater design, however, uses a redstone torch to start which inverts the redstone signal, but it will also extend the redstone signal and take the same amount of time as a normal repeater would. Then instead of using a repeater which would occur on the next P tick, I use a piston retracting which would occur on a C tick instead, which you can tell is closer than the next P tick. You can tell that a repeater will only fit inside of one redstone tick, but with my design I'm able to fit the redstone torch and the piston inside both the same redstone tick. Which basically means the repeater would only extend the signal once, but since I have the piston and the torch, it would basically extend the signal twice in the same amount of time it would take the normal repeater. But as you can tell, after that piston, what I do is then I put a repeater to extend the signal again. And then following that repeater, I put another piston. And then you can just keep repeating with the piston and then the repeater over and over again as long as you want the wire to extend for. And then at the very end, instead of placing a repeater, I place a redstone torch inverting the signal again, so it's basically the same as it was when I inputted it. However, as you can see, the one downside to half tick repeaters is they take the same amount of time to turn off as a regular repeater line, which may also confuse you. But this happens because instead of the piston retracting, instantly removing the redstone signal that the redstone block was providing, the piston now has to extend, which takes three game ticks. Skipping the next P tick, so now the repeater would update on the next P tick, when the repeater on the other line would also activate. Well, those are just a few examples of things you can do with PNC ticks. I encourage you to go out and see what things you can create using PNC ticks. And let me know what cool things you guys create in the comment section down below. This video was inspired by Ben the Human's video on this topic. His channel will be linked down in the description. If you want to learn more about PNC ticks and zero ticks, I highly recommend you go check out his channel. Also, if you're interested in my crazy projects, check out this video where I make a 200 piston extender to show my superior redstone skills over Omen 3307.